Hello, now I'm going to talk about the black box coverage, where I'm, what I try to do here is to identify the minimal set of test cases that have the high probability of find a bug, okay, by looking only at the specification. And the, the main idea here is to partition the inputs of, my, the, of the unit and the test for using the specification and grouping these into equivalence uh, partitionings. What does it mean? It means that when I have equivalence partitioning, if I keep, pick one value from this equivalent partitioning, the probability, and if the test passes with that value, the probability that the test pa passes with, with any other value then is the same. Okay? So it means that I only need to test one element from, the, from each partitioning. Okay, so I reduce significantly the number of test cases. Okay? But of course, bugs usually are in the boundary between uh, the, the partitions. Why? Because sometimes uh, the fault is instead of uh, greater than, you, have, you wrote greater or equal than. Okay? So you also pick values in the borders between partitions. I'm going to explain this with a very simple example where you have a method called final result that receives a grade and returns a string. And the string should be pass or fail. Okay? And the idea what I'm going to do is that, well, I'm going to identify what is the partitioning. And my point is that, well, maybe it's enough to test for a value between 0 and 9. Why? Because the result will be the same. So if it works, for instance, for 5, then, and I test it that the result is fail, Okay, it's enough. And the same for pass. Probably is enough to test it for 15. Okay, so I have two partitions. Okay, and sometimes if I want my software to be robust, I would, may consider illegal per partitions. I may ask, well, what is the behavior if the, the, the grade is below zero or more than uh, 20? In that case, maybe I only need to talk with the developers and change the specification and say, well, maybe you should throw an exception there and I should then I test it what is the behavior when the value for instance is minus 20 and 50 and now if I want to consider the boundary analysis values I should also consider for minus 1 and 0 because well that's the point where I get an error or fail and 9 and 10 which is the point where we pass fail or pass okay so as you see just looking at this small example, you, get, you start getting a lot of test cases, okay? But at least you have a good level of confidence that if you test for these values, for all other values, the behavior will be the same, okay? I'm ignoring the implementation, okay? So how does, does this scale? Well, this scales in the following way. Now, if you have more inputs here, you basically introduce a new dimension. And then instead of having one dimension, you start to have a matrix of possible combinations of values. And another thing that has impact on the dimension is the internal state of the object. In this case, this is stateless. But suppose that is the example of the stack. You should consider what is the internal state of the stack. If it is full, if it is empty, and then it's another dimension that you add. And finally, the last thing you need to consider is how are you going to combine values from the different dimensions. Okay, and the idea here is that you sh when you run a test, if the test fails, it should be for a single reason. So the idea is that, for instance, in this case, you test to pass here, and you test all possible combinations. Okay, okay represents a new dimension. So I'm not putting the value here, but what I'm putting is that this is just where the behavior is okay. Okay. So the value in this dimension just returns an OK value, an OK behavior. So I repeat this for all these combinations in this dimension. Okay? Then when I move to test in this dimension, I put an OK value here. In this case, I say that is 15 and pass. What is wrong to do is something like this, that I just combine a not OK here in this dimension and a not OK there. Because now I don't know if the error is because of this or that, and then actually then is is, is harder to, to debug. Okay? 
I think this is uh, enough to you start test, uh, studying the material about uh, per, uh, equivalence partition and uh, boundary analysis. Okay, thank you.